Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is having a beautiful weekend. Hope everybody is enjoying their lives. Again, guys, at, at the end of the day, you, you can't stress the little things in life. Life is too short. You don't get a mulligan. You don't get a second chance. You got to do what you have to do to just be happy. That's it. Just be happy. Everything else um, kind of falls, kind of falls in line. Stop chasing money. Uh, always think of the small things in life and the small things add up to something really, really special. And you'll quickly see, which unfortunately a lot of people uh, don't realize till they get, you know, very, very up in age that life passes by very, very quickly. So forget about the small, don't sweat the small stuff, live life, love your family, love your friends, love your loved ones. And the most important thing is just treat every single day as a blessing because it is. So hopefully you guys are having an awesome, awesome weekend. Here in New Jersey, it just doesn't stop raining. It's just amazing. Uh, but it is. Again, it is what it is. And let this be my worst uh, problem in life. So let's get started, right, guys? Welcome for all you guys who are joining us uh, via YouTube and Twitter and uh, um, stock twists and everything else in between. When I was growing up, uh, and it's funny to say as I was growing up because this person is, is, is pretty much the same, same age as me. Um, but when I grew up, I was a you know, really, really big baseball fan. And I used to love... Like, you know, big Yankee fan. I used to love like Dave Winfield and uh, Don Madden. Like, Don Madden was like my absolute uh, favorite player of all time. And then years went by and I really had a big affection on Derek Jeter, right? He was, he was my, he turned out to be my favorite uh, baseball player of all time. And if you, if you really think about Derek Jeter's career, okay, he was not the flashiest player, okay? He was not, and you can make an argument, he wasn't probably in the top two or three shortstops in his generation, right? You, you, he didn't put up the gaudy numbers that Alex Rodriguez did, right? He wasn't winning batting titles nonstop like even a Normar uh, Garcia Parra. He wasn't a defensive wizard like an Omar Vizquel. So what made the guy special? You know, what made this guy into an all-time great? And when you look back, right, when you really look back at Derek Jeter, okay, and, and you look back on a trader who's been doing this a very, very long time, it's the consistency level, okay? Uh, Derek Jeter did not go into the Hall of Fame because he hit 260 lifetime home runs, okay? 260 lifetime home runs for a 20-year career is pretty much nothing, right? It's pretty much nothing. But he went into the Hall of Fame because he was consistent, okay? He found what he needed, okay, on a day-to-day -day basis routine that even though he didn't get the, the big, big notoriety, for example, like an Alex Rodriguez hitting 75 home runs a year, okay, or winning 19 gold gloves like an Omar Vizquel, but he kept on doing the same thing that he felt comfortable every single day that gave him not only 3,400 uh, base hits, but he was able to be blessed to do this for over 20 years. And oh, by the way, he had something that Omar Vizquel and Alex Rodriguez and Omar Garcia Parra didn't have. He had five titles, right? He had five world championship titles, and he is probably top two or three revered Yankees of all time. And how it translates into trading is, you know, and I, I see this all the time, especially with new traders, you don't need to be the smartest trader in the world, okay? You don't need. You don't need to be the brightest. You don't need to have the most money. You don't need to have the greatest education, okay? All you need is the desire for hard work. And the one thing when you speak to uh, all of Derek Jeter's teammates and uh, former, uh, former colleagues, whatever the case may be, People will say, look, he might have not had the biggest talent in the world or the greatest talent in the world, but it's very, very rare that somebody would, would outwork him. And with trading, it's exactly the same thing. You might not be, uh, you might not be born with the, this ultimate talent for dissecting information, collecting data, and processing and executing it flawlessly. But what you lack in talent, and I believe that, that really speaks for myself, 
What I lack in talent, because again, I'm not the smartest guy in the world. Again, I am the king of the idiots. Um, what I lack in talent, nobody's going to outwork me. Okay, nobody's going to look at more charts than me. Nobody's going to sit there for two hours at six o'clock in the morning on a Saturday and back test with a one percent chance I'm going to find something new. So we we lack with talent. Okay, we can make up with that at hard work. And again, you don't need to be the greatest home run hitter of all time, right? Two hundred sixty home runs in twenty years. Okay. All you need to do is find that one thing, right? That one arbitrage, that one edge that nobody has or very, very few people have and embrace it and just keep on building over and over it. And the more consistency, the more repetition, the more screen time, the more years that go by, the talent that you don't have, okay, is going to be replaced with repetition, okay, hard work and the word consistency. And I see this all the time, especially a lot of you guys, the only only exposure, again, to trading that you guys have is social media. And I see this all the time. Traders talking about how they gave back their whole month on one trade. They gave back their whole year on one trade. And the more I think about that is it, it's overwhelming to see a new trader you know, finally have the ability, a little bit of confidence, a little bit of consistency to make something out of nothing and then give it back irresponsibly on one trade, okay? And the most amazing part is you'll never hear that somebody trading Intel or somebody trading Procter & Gamble or Johnson & Johnson uh, or, uh, or even tell Twitter, for God's sake. But unfortunately, it does come with the very, very big risk, right? Risk on, risk off trades. And when you're trading a stock that has momentum, a catalyst behind it, and it's up, 50, 60, 100, 300, 500 percent of the day, your depletion of reward gets smaller and smaller and smaller as your risk starts to widen, widen, widen. And I know a lot of things, you know, a lot of people love that whole short into the parabolic move. How could it still be up? The stock only had, the company only has $12,000 in their bank account. What can go wrong? How can they possibly go higher? And then the next thing they knew, uh, they are putting themselves in the position that they become a flash in the pan, they get burnt out, uh, their account gets blown up, and they unfortunately keep on repeating the same things over and over again. So again, kind of the message going forward, guys, especially, and again, I'm speaking only to the new traders. I will never speak to the veteran trader because you've been to that, right? You've realized that. The reason why you're trading now 7, 9, 12, 15, 20 years is because unfortunately many traders have learned this lesson along the way. And if you're a new trader and you're just starting out in your first two, three years, you don't need to go through that route. You don't need to pay that um, exaggerated market cost to realize what you're doing is wrong. Again, the most important part of trading is it's not the sexy trade, okay? It's the clean trade. It's the savvy trade. It's the cleanest path. It's the clearest path to the goal line. So guys, again, the best player is not always the most consistent. Again, if you had to choose the difference between uh, a player that goes one year, like a Brady Anderson, for all you baseball fans, that hit 49 or 56 home runs one year and you never heard from him again, Derek Jeter never hit those 56 home runs. You know, hell, I don't even think he hit 15 home runs in one year. But more important is he's consistent, he found his edge, and he kept on repeating it over and over again. So, guys, hopefully you'll listen to that uh, and kind of have an aha light bulb moment. So let's get into the market, folks, right? Flat week for the indexes all across the board, right? Flat week across the board. And we finally got what we talked about in the last couple of weeks, right? Remember, we, we, always, we were saying the last several weeks, the market's just not going to tap you on your shoulder, right? For all you guys who've been watching this uh, for the last several weeks, just especially the last couple of weeks, the market is going gonna, is gonna to rip you, okay? It's going to rip you. It's going to pull the plug. And if you're not careful, if you don't see these signs, you're dead. And we had this really massive two-day, and I say massive, it pretty much was. Uh, you had this really, really aggressive rug pull in the middle of the week, um, for two days in a row, you have 250, uh, 250 points apiece uh, on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. The NASDAQ 100 uh, got hit as well. And a lot of traders, and it's very, very amazing that a lot of traders even, even went this route and said, well, who would have saw this coming? And it's amazing that they would say that because, again, when you're in a linear move and you're going higher and higher and higher and the, and the, and the uh, candles are shrinking, shrinking, and shrinking on this linear move, well, what do you think is going to happen? And again, Nobody ever called for Armageddon. Nobody ever called for the end of destruction and price per share. All we were talking about, this is going to happen. Gravity is real. 
And the greatest part about what happened, okay, and it really, it really is, a, is a testament how strong this market is. The bulls could have really rolled over, okay? We talked about this line in the sand after the NASDAQ 100 came into the rising 20-day uh, support. We, we, you know, it was amazing how strong the bulls were. They could have easily rolled over. They put a line in the sand at 186.87 on the NASDAQ 100, the Qs, and they could have given it up the next day. But it's, it really is a testament how strong this bull market is despite two aggressive, aggressive days of selling. The bulls stepped right back up. You had pretty good uh, earnings all across the board. You had uh, you had Warren Buffett, and again, talk about uh, talk about change. Warren Buffett, right? He owns Geico. He owns like flooring companies, carpet companies. Okay, this dude, candy companies, and it's amazing how in the last two years he's bought Apple, and now we came out on Friday talked about how Berkshire Hathaway has bought Amazon shares. So, you know, you could be a trader and you could be working with something that is working for once and working for twice. Maybe it will work for 10 times, but you always have to put your situation that you are changing with the market. And Warren Buffett, even at an advanced stage of where he is in life, he's still changing. He's still changing with the times and he's gone from flooring, right? To like, like Kit Kat bars or Geico or hell, whatever hell he's invested in, into into iPads, right, and into Amazon Prime. So it really is a, a testament how an investor and a trader really needs to keep up uh, with the times. But kind of getting back into the tape, this week, ridiculously aggressive, right? Ridiculously aggressive. And again, it goes back to the theory that indexes mean nothing. If you look at uh, the final tally in the scoreboard, you had the S&P 500 gained two-tenths of a percent, right? NASDAQ, uh, the Dow slipped two-tenths of a percent. And the NASDAQ rose to tenths of a percent. And it, you really would never even think that this was actually happening because the massive ranges that we saw uh, over this past week. Uh, Tesla was an absolute beast of a trader. Okay. Uh, I think it was on Tuesday or Wednesday, I caught that really nasty aggressive short through that 237 level, went all the way down to 231. If you guys have been following me, especially, um, on social media, you know, for a long time, you kind of see what I do with Tesla pretty much on a daily basis. But uh, massive ranges in Tesla, massive ranges in Amazon. Matter of fact, Thursday you had this really phenomenal move. I mean, really, really phenomenal move uh, in uh, shares of Amazon. We talked about that 1906, uh, 1909, 1906 pivot that I was going to get down to. Uh, I felt like 1877, 1880, you know, put in a low of 1881, and then this massive, massive move right back up, especially off the opening range uh, around the 1950 level. So you had really, really big moves uh, in names like Tesla, in Amazon, uh, Netflix, big, big monster. Uh, Alibaba broke out, considering uh, Amazon, uh, Apple is still very, very strong. Um, Apple is very, very strong. You have uh, Microsoft, very, very strong. Even garbage like Lyft, right? Even garbage like Lyft that, again, the, the, the most important part that I, that I tell people when they ask me about pivots, nobody needs to be in these trades with me, okay? Like nobody needs to be in these trades. The reason why pivots work is organic order flow is coming in mostly from the institutional side. And if buyers clean up sellers, they're going to go. So if you go through my, like my Twitter feed just from Friday, I, had, I put in two trades that I had nothing to do with, okay? I had zero positions in these things. The first one was Lyft, and I said, hey, if this thing can start building over 62, 62, 10, you should see it moving. It you know, ran up to 63. I still actually still like it. it, it you know, they did get a, a mid-afternoon downgrade, but they ate the downgrade really, really up, and now you can see how it's moving up. And again, Facebook was another perfect example. On Friday, uh, I was already done with the day, and I said, hey, listen, if, if the shorts get trapped, uh, on the 195.15 level, you know, there's a shot they get squeezed back up. And it went from the 195.10 uh, to, you know, 196.15 in a matter of 30 minutes. So, it, it, again, before all you guys are so in love with all these alerts and so oh, you have to wait for somebody to tell you to do so, this is what's great about technical analysis. Nobody needs to hold your hand. The stock is either going to work or it's not. And the, the, the more that you keep on feeding and feeding and feeding into these alerts and somebody has to tell you and hold your hand, you're really – you're really curbing your development, okay? And it really is doing absolutely nothing for you. So before you go out and thank some random 22-year-old for a trade that made you $76, all you need to do is look at technical analysis right in front of you. 
And the faster you embrace TA and the faster you uh, put yourself in a position that you feel confident putting on positions without anybody holding your hand, that's when the light bulb is going to go on. Okay, That's when the light bulb is really going to start, uh, start shining very, very bright. And you're going to get that organic confidence to start being a professional trader. Uh, so going to this week, look, you, you got to be bullish, man. How, how do you not be bullish? You got, you got to love the action. Uh, primarily, pretty much everything already came out with earnings. Uh, even bad, bad earnings are being engulfed. Okay, uh, Bad headlines are being engulfed. Again, every single day, we're literally, literally having uh, the White House update us that everything's going great with China. Literally every single day. Look, enough, enough already. Okay, I, I don't want to hear the labor pains anymore. Just show me the damn baby. Okay, I don't care if the China trade deal never gets solved. Okay, just stop talking about it. And the worst part of it is, it's literally every single day, and it feels like right when you're in a trade, this headline comes out. Right, so it's going to affect your trade very, very quickly. Um, and the most important part is, guys, uh, again. Whatever type of trader you are, okay, you can be a swing trader, option trader, uh, you can trade pivots like me, trade futures, uh, commodities, forks, whatever it is, make sure whatever you're doing, you're doing on a value to your system. So again, don't trade because the market's open, trade because you have value. So let's talk about Friday, right? Uh, very aggressive session, okay? Again, it's been now like almost a year now, and for some reason, Fridays have now taken over as the most aggressive day of the week. Again, I have no documented evidence or statistical evidence why, but you can see if you trade for a living and you trade every single day, you know how aggressive Fridays are. Maybe it's because of, of the uber, no pun intended, uh, exorbitant amount of weekly option flow that's coming into these names that are giving these shares a boost. Whatever the case may be, Friday has been just ridiculously aggressive. So uh, let's talk about it, right? Let's talk about Friday's session. Um, yeah, so here's you know here's Friday's session. Here is uh, the watch list. Okay, so here was Friday's session again. What you're looking at, folks, is uh, what you're looking at is uh, the stock twits feed. It's the same thing on our Twitter feed, and obviously we have uh, more added dimensions in the live webinar because we play a lot of these uh, bounce plays that we don't put on social media. Well, because we need to get liquidity on those areas. So we do play those uh, a lot. And they've been tremendous value for us uh, for quite a while now. So here's, you know, here's the first trade of the day. Uh, Alibaba was really strong. I mean, uh, this is my first trade of the day. Uh, Alibaba needs to reclaim uh, the 192, 90, 93 area to go. Uh, this was a really big trade. And, and the craziest thing about this trade, it just went straight up. So you can see, here's a supply right here, right? Here's a supply right here. And all it needed to do is reclaim the supply. And literally on one candle, it went from that 193 level to, to, to 95. I mean, just, just one candle, uh, super aggressive. Uh, again, congratulations for you guys who took it. Uh, 83, there was actually a sneaky pivot. I got long off that, um, what was it? 80 and 80 and a half, 81 area. I'll, I'll show you that in a second. Uh, but the natural pivot on Netflix was uh, 83, 60, 84. It needed to build. And again, let me just show you why the natural pivot was there at 83, 50. It was right here. It was the top of this channel here. So once it broke that 83, 50, uh, you can see the move going all the way to 85. But, but I'll show you. There was a sneaky entry uh, that I took early. I still like NVIDIA. I really like NVIDIA. And let me show you this channel here. Um, you can see how tight this channel is. It didn't trigger on Friday. You can see how tight this channel is. The top of this channel here is like 84.73. So if it starts building above this channel here at 185, it could really get going. There's some pretty good uh, order flow all week on those uh, 185 summer expiration months, but uh, 185 calls. We'll get to that uh, in a few minutes. But I really still like NVIDIA. Uh, Apple uh, needs 211 to go. Uh, Apple looks really, really good. Um, Apple looks really, really good. So here was a 211 area, traded up to 212. I still like, I think Apple goes higher. Uh, OLED, I, I didn't take this trade. OLED was crazy thin. If you got it, great job. I missed it uh, because it was just, well, too crazy for me. It was way too thin. But OLED, we talked about this 180 level pre-market. Uh, it broke this 180 level. It put up a $9 candle. If you got a piece of this trade, great job. It was just 
too crazy for me. It was no, I had no interest in this thing. Uh, WW, not a big move, but I uh, put up like a 40, 50 cent move on uh, Weight Watchers uh, off this uh, 24 area. Yeah, put up a you know, 40 cent candle, not a big move, but a $20 stock is still a $20 stock. Um, here was the monster move. So, so Tesla, we talked about this 249 area, okay? It rejected twice. Initial move was the 251, right? I said it needs to reclaim and build because it, again, it got rejected there a couple of times. In my wildest dreams, that I not, th 251, I thought it was attainable, maybe 251 and a half, 252, but 251 was attainable. By no stretch of the imagination that I think, that I thought uh, Tesla was gonna do this. So here is the build, right? So here was the build right over here. Here was the 249 candle, right? Again, we're not looking at the top of the channel. We're not looking sometimes at the bottom of the channel. The meat of the move is right in the middle. And this is what we talk about. If you follow me on social media, this is what we talk about the sneaky candle. So you can see how many times it got rejected at, at 49. It was actually more than twice. One, two, three, four times, five times. And once it reclaimed the 249, not only did it take out the 249, see, I thought it was gonna stop right here, right? Right into the supply zone. It usually would stop nine out of 10 times into the upper Bollinger Band. It, it went through it like a knife through butter and it, it went literally from 249 all the way up to like 250, almost 257. And obviously I like this whole range here tomorrow at Morning Strategy, we'll talk about that as well. But it just a sick, sick move on uh, Tesla. And Netflix, here was the sneaky candle I talked about, right? So I wrote, it needs to build over this 380.75-381 level. Okay, so forget about the 380.350-384. Here was the sneaky entry. So let me show you why, right? Let me show you why really quickly. So if you look at if you look at Netflix, right? You see this candle right here, guys? Everybody see this candle hit supply? It hit supply and put in a high of 380.63. So we knew it really needed to start a building off that 380.75, 381 level. And once the and once the buyers really started building over that 81, this thing exploded, just absolutely exploded. Uh, not only did it take out and confirm that 81, it took out the original uh, the original entry that we talked about, this 83, 84 level, really, really big move. And now Netflix does look like it wants to challenge the top of this channel. So big move there as well. Uh, Tesla obviously uh, never got to this 253, uh, 253 level for a possible flush, but let me just show you the rationale behind it. And again, this is why we talk about, we don't care about, uh, we don't really care about uh, which way the, the pivot confirms, as long as it confirms. And you see these two candles right here, right? This 253, 253. If one of these candles would have confirmed that 253, it would have flushed down. So again, the greatest part about pivots is they have no bias, okay? We don't care which way, as long as the channel is providing us data, multiple data points of candles, distribution, and once they confirm to the upside, we go long, obviously once they confirm to the downside, we go short. So very, very uh, aggressive day, very aggressive week as well. And again, it, it all, it, I'm telling you, as the day is long, it, you know, you don't need to trade every day, okay? You don't need to trade every single uh, minute of the day. You don't need to trade every single week. The most important part is whatever your, whatever your course of action is as a trader, and everybody has a different timeline, everybody has a different uh, account size, years of experience, pain thresholds, lifestyles, however you decide to trade, just make sure, again, it's on your time, not because the market's open. So let me give you guys uh, some ideas uh, for Monday. Let me give you guys a few ideas for Monday uh, that I do like. And I, I, I do like this NVIDIA. I, I really do. I, I think this NVIDIA, uh, and again, it's not imminent. You can see it. It's not an imminent. You should just put, you know, set an alert for the week. Uh, but if this 185 channel goes, and obviously the stock closed at 83, but if this 185 channel goes, look how much room you have, right? If the market continues, again, if you believe in the theory that stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand, again, we don't even know if this is going to get triggered this week. But if this thing starts building 85, for all you option players, you have room all the way up to this 191 area uh, if this market, uh, you know, if the, this market continues. So keep an eye on that. Um, I like Twitter. Um, I would like to see a dip on Twitter into rising 60 minutes support. And by the way, that trade, excuse me, that trade was working all week, okay? All these stocks that are very strong, if we get a light open on any day and they trickle down, light volume trickle down into 60-minute rising support, that's the entry. And we saw 
crazy moves this week in Facebook, in Apple, crazy bounces in Netflix, in Tesla, all off these bottom channels, in Amazon. So for those of you guys in the live webinar, you know exactly what we talk about. It's a, an excellent, excellent way uh, to subsidize and wait for these natural pivots to confirm in the process. But uh, I like Twitter. If you can see a, a dip into the 60-minute support, that'd be great. However, if this thing starts building off of this uh, 40, 90, 41 level, you could get an extension into this 42 channel as well. Um, I kind of like Lyft. Eh, okay. I kind of like Lyft. Um, okay. I kind of like Lyft. Uh, look, I, it trades like crap. It, it really does. It, it does. It's not a smooth trader. Um, I did see two things that I like. Uh, it broke above the 62, cha 62 ch 10 channel that I liked and confirmed, and it hit the supply zone right here in this linear regression line. Um, and I also like the fact that in the middle of the afternoon, after it got downgraded, it trapped shorts when it went, when it went unched and went right back to the highs. So what I do like about it is if it could reclaim, and this is a whole number, it makes it a lot easier. Uh, if it can reclaim the 63 level and build, Lyft can go. Uh, what I also saw was an opening uh, call buyer. I, I forgot what month it was. It could have been, it could have been June, but I, I some you have, you have to double check that. But somebody started buying uh, the 70 calls, and again, you could see why the measured potential. If and again, Lyft is a whole different animal, but if Lyft can well Lyft and it could start building multiple days, you could see a measured move into this level of $70. But again, for all you guys trading it, it needs to start uh, building over that 63 level. So keep an eye on that. I like Microsoft. Um, I kind of like Microsoft as well. First close over the five day. Again, a lot of you guys don't put a lot of stock into the five day. I do. It represents the shortest term bias. If it can start building above uh, Friday's high, of like you know 129.50, keep an eye on for uh, early call buyers. And again, all that stuff we provide uh, in the live webinar, the, the option flow, uh, the, the greatest squawk box on the planet. You can't buy the squawk box. Literally, you cannot buy the squawk box. Well, you guys uh, in the live webinar, you understand why. Uh, phenomenal squawk box, phenomenal option flow. You get that all included, all included. You don't have to guess. Uh, but if you see, start seeing uh, very, very aggressive option order flow, especially uh, near term on Microsoft on Friday, watch the 29 uh, 50 level is that. Uh, for all you guys who are joining us tomorrow in the live webinar, please get there at 9 a.m. Eastern time. Morning strategy starts up a few minutes later, and then we go through all the early pivots. Guys, I want to wish everybody an awesome, awesome week. Live your life. Uh, smile. Smile. That's all you need to do. Smile. Give somebody a big hug. Give somebody a big kiss. We only have one life. Let's live it to the fullest. Guys, God bless. I'll see you on the field tomorrow. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today. Thank you.